infection, if, if you're wearing a high quality mask trying to get infection, uh, remember we talked about copper, that's why there's a couple masks that have some copper in them based out of Israel. And those ones have uh, some advantages theoretically because they got copper in them, right? So if you're looking for, well, what's the best mask mark? Okay, get one with copper in it. You know, it'll probably be a little bit better for you, right? Um, next, if you wear a mask, you may get more asymptomatic disease. What does that mean? That when you wear a mask, it's possible that because you're wearing a mask, you get less of a viral load. You may decrease your chance of getting infection. Usually we talk about where you're just trying not to give it to people, but there's a chance not strong, right? A surgical mask can de decrease the viral load to you uh, quite a bit. Not everybody's wearing surgical masks and face shields can also help. By the way, by the way, there was a good study uh, done in China. Are you ready for this? Ready for this? It's very important. Um, the issue is, is that they showed that people who wore glasses were less likely to get infected, right? And that's just because you don't get propagation of the virus to the actual eyes, right? So face shields can have a little bit of a benefit, right? And so that's that's something to, to keep in mind also. But, but keep in mind, the science on this is low quality. This is stuff, this is not just you know, crazy stuff. This is the Annals of Internal Medicine, the entire national review published in October this year, not from years ago, right? Why? Why is it that there's a, you know, masks are not necessarily as great as ever makes you think, right? Multiple reasons. One, because masks, the data on masks were originally developed in medical settings, right? That's why back in March, when everybody was saying about masks, and you had Adams, the Surgeon General, and Fauci from NAD, and Robert Redfield from CC all saying, well, don't wear masks, right? Yeah, they were saying that because all the science said it probably didn't make a difference outside of an intensive medical setting, right? Of course, they all changed their mind because people feel they got to do something and say something. But that the science, the science is, is that this is a problem with the mask. A lot of people, you'll notice, they put a mask on, then they're adjusting all the time with their hands. It's not really fit around their face. And then they're using it, putting it down, putting it up and stuff. So that's why sometimes these masks don't live up to what people think that they should do or how they could work, right? Um, and that's why there's uh, there was no change in that, right? There's different efficacies. But here's here's something I think is very helpful, right? Just look at this. Look at this. this is from the medical literature, right? So what's the risk of where you are and what type of protection do you need? So if you're working alone, or you're walking outside, you don't need a mask, right? As you start to go into an urban area, okay? Well, maybe a retail store, okay. Now you're telling me, maybe, maybe you can have a walk, okay. So what I say to my patients all the time, look, you know, if you're going into a store, there's other people there, wear a mask, right? Does, does it, do I have good science behind it? No. Do I think it's reasonable? Yeah, I think it's okay. Right. Um, but the science is just not great. Right. Um, but but if it's going to be a store, a lot of people or it's a smaller store, it doesn't have good ventilation. Right. But we start to get those subways. Right. Well, we know from New York, look what happens on crowded subways. Right. OK, now now you're starting to get to situations where there can be more of an argument for masking. Right. And then certainly you get to the medical world, our world. This is where the data comes from. This is where the data says, yes, in these types of scenarios, there is good use of these masks and they should be used, right? And so another way to look at this is what's your job? What is the job and what's reasonable for that job, right? So you can see as you get into work activities which are high occupancy, poorly ventilated, then the need for the masks go up. But if you're outdoors, well ventilated, right? Those kind of things. And this is the type of activities you're looking at then the mask probably doesn't make a big difference, right? So that's that's one of the ways to kind of think about it, right? And so this is, um, uh, this is a sneeze. So take a look at this, right? Got it? So this is with a face shield, right? And you can see what happens when you have face shields and what happens to the aerosol over time, right? And how it can stay around and what kind of protection it may or may not give you, right? So some people find, find that these are very helpful to them. Okay, um, and uh, I have to just do this real quick because I knew someone was going to ask me, so I just thought I'd do this for you. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, vaccines. All right, so look, everybody's talking about the vaccines right now. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, safety and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do uh, recommend uh, everybody get vaccines. Um, there's a couple groups in some of my patients where you have a different discussion. Um, the one I'm safe to talk about with all of you right now is to talk about you know, kids under 16. Uh, right now, I would not give a vaccine to. 
Um, we could have a discussion about other vaccines, uh, but uh, but that's that kind of thing. Uh, but otherwise, in general, I'm very supportive of the uh, vaccines um, and, and, and something that I think uh, everybody should be doing. Um, and the vaccines should work on most of the variants. The one in South Africa might be a little bit weaker, but still the crossover looks pretty good. Those are the different ones. As you know, we have two different ones right now, Pfizer and Moderna. Uh, Johnson Johnson AstraZeneca will be coming out. And by the way, by the way, by the way, very important, very important. Um, the Johnson Johnson AstraZeneca, the advantage is they do not require the same negative cold chain storage. So you should be able to distribute those to regular doctor's offices if they will or not, who knows, the government controls all this stuff. Um, and, uh, but that would be advantage. And the Johnson Johnson product advantage um, is it's only one shot, AstraZeneca is two shots, uh, but they're also done by the older technology, not the new RNA, mRNA technology, which some people have some concerns about. Uh, air travel in general, just real quickly, for if you have claims of people who travel on the air and they're saying, well, because for work I had to travel and stuff like that, okay, yes, it does increase your risk um, because you're just going through a lot of stuff, but probably, probably for the, for the sake of this discussion, just so you've heard the signs, um, as of October, there are probably 40 cases that seem to be air-related air travel uh, cases out of thousands and thousands to hundreds of thousands now approaching millions of people traveling on the airplanes. So in general, when uh, people say they travel for work or travel for personal, in general, I tell everybody that I think it is relatively a safe environment. Okay, here's the summary, and then I'm going to go to your questions, right? So diets of weight loss important. We talk about the obesity risk, right? Uh, see your doctor regularly. I can't think of a better time in your life to have a relationship with your regular family doctor to help you navigate all this information, right? Get a flu shot every fall. If you tell me you don't get flu shots, but you're gonna get this shot, you you make no sense to me at all, right? Uh, we've talked about who should get a vaccine. We talked about that range of options um, and, and stuff. As always with everything we do, uh, prayer is very important. Um, so uh, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna take your question.